Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. If you've made it here, it means that you might just love ISO standards as much as me and you are truly interested and possibly excited about learning more about them. Well, you've come to the right place. video, I'm going to cover Clause 5.3, Organisational Roles, Responsibilities and Authorities. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organisation system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is and what I think the key word is in this clause. Without this key word, the requirements can be challenging to meet. So stick with me. Okay, let's get started. The overarching or leading statement in this clause is, top management shall ensure that the responsibilities and authorities for relevant roles are assigned, communicated and understood within the organization. There's those words again, top management. Let me remind you who this is. The official definition for top management is the person or group of people who directs and controls an organization at the highest level. I always say that top management are the decision makers. Depending on the structure and size of the business, top management could be the owners, shareholders, board of directors, general manager, or even a project manager if the scope of the system is down to a project level only. Now that we're clear with who top management are again, let's look back at what this clause says. It says that the responsibilities and authorities for relevant roles are assigned, so delegated, given to someone who has responsibility for them communicated. So this could mean that these responsibilities and authorities are shared within the organization. So everyone is aware who is responsible for what. This communication could be part of induction and training, or it could simply be available to view within the business. Then finally, this is all to be understood. So part of this assigning and communicating needs to ensure that not only the person assigned the role, but others as well should understand who is responsible for what. So whatever communication form you use needs to ensure that it is clear and able to be understood. You might see this in position descriptions or organizational charts as well. Remember though that this clause doesn't say you shall maintain position descriptions and organizational charts. It just says to assign, communicate, and make sure people understand. I've just given you an idea of what I normally see out there that businesses put together to meet this requirement, and that is position descriptions and org charts. Now, on top of this general requirement, this clause has five specific responsibilities that top management is to assign and give authority to. These specific responsibilities and authorities all relate to the quality management system. They are ensuring that the quality management system conforms to the requirements of this international standard and ensuring that the processes are delivering their intended outputs. Now, this just means that there is to be someone responsible and with authority to monitor and check that the system is being followed. This could be through internal audits or scheduled operational reviews. Whatever the business determines the monitoring and evaluation requirements are, and how these will be performed. Then following this point, C states that there should also be someone responsible and with authority reporting on the performance of the quality management system and on opportunities for improvement, in particular to top management. This makes sense based on the previous two points. 
Obviously, if you are monitoring whether the quality management system conforms to the standard and that the processes are delivering intended outputs, then there would have to be some objective reporting provided to top management to demonstrate the status of the system. Is it conforming? Is it not? Where are the areas that can improve? And so on. Then point D goes on to state an additional responsibility and authority of ensuring the promotion of customer focus throughout the organization. This promotion of customer focus should be supporting the requirement for top management to demonstrate their leadership and commitment with respect to customer focus, as ultimately they are accountable for it. This might look like being involved in the processes for determining customer requirements, including any applicable statutory or regulatory requirements, ensuring that risks and opportunities have been identified and continue to be identified when it comes to product and service conformity, while the ultimate focus should be on exceeding customer satisfaction. This doesn't mean that the person who has this responsibility and authority is working at an operational level only. It means that they can be a part of the monitoring, review and improvement. And then finally, point E states that someone also is to be responsible for ensuring the integrity of the quality management system is maintained when changes to the quality management system are planned and implemented. So when there are changes and improvements to the system, the impact of these changes should be monitored to ensure no other areas have been impacted. Monitoring requirements are explained further in Clause 7.1, Monitoring and Measuring Resources, as well as Clause 9, Performance Evaluation. Really these five points, A through to E, are just about having someone responsible for the quality management system itself. Actually, I say someone like it's just one person. It doesn't actually say that. These responsibilities can be split up or shared across several people or a team. The other thing that stands out for me with this clause is the word authority. Yes, this is a word I mentioned was key to these requirements. You may have noted that the clause mentions responsibilities, but in each instance, it also mentions authority. You can have responsibility without the authority. However, when it comes to a management system and being responsible for conformance, maintenance, integrity and reporting, without the authority to do this, it becomes very difficult to gain traction and most importantly, implement change and improvement. I have seen this so many times in businesses. They have given this responsibility to a team member. However, they do not have the authority to issue findings or put forward changes and reinforce these changes with other workers. They are just scoffed at and taken far too lightly. When this happens, nothing changes and the system stagnates or more so declines. When you are looking at delegating and giving other responsibilities, also look at the authorities you are giving them. This is the important part to ensure is assigned, communicated and understood within the organization as well as externally where it is relevant. Thank you so much for joining me. Clearly you are truly dedicated to learning more about ISO standards. I love having you learn with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also 
don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me. Thank you.